Receiving the message, telling them which, which button to push, you know, which key, and that person would push the key and there'd be somebody else that would be writing down which one lit up because it's, there's no output other than just the light at the moment you push it. And the keys, the keys will all light up, you know, whenever you hit one. And it's, it's scary to think the Germans made, you know, just a couple basic mistakes that allowed us to figure, allowed mostly the British to figure out how to decode it. And one was that the, whatever key you push, it would not encode to that same key. Which was a, which was just, I mean, that, that they thought that by not having it one to one, it was making it safer. It actually made it much, you know, it, it eliminated orders of magnitude of, of possibilities. Okay, sure. The the other thing is there has to be a starting rotor position, and if they had rolled a dice like you see in the in the video, it would have enabled a more random starting position. Instead, it's like all of us, you know, half of our four digit codes are one, two, three, four, you know, so they got lazy mm -hmm. and they would use the same starting position all the time. And that also made it a lot more, uh, you know, a lot, lot easier to break. And then the typical thing was if you saw the movie imitation game, yeah. there were weather forecasts that were given every morning, you know, for certain areas. And the clowns would, would end their transmission with Heil Hitler. <laughs> Well, that right. gave that gave them a sequence of characters in every one of those messages that that was a head start. I remember that. That still didn't, you know, that still didn't get it down to an easy break, but it probably got it down to, you know, a hundred million million instead of, you know, you know, one with eighteen zeros behind it. How heavy is that? Um, it's not as portable as it looks. It's it's a solid machine, so. Um, we should have weighed it before we put it in there, but it's at least uh, 20, 25 pounds. Um, it's pretty substantial. When we were lugging it through the airport, it was pretty, pretty substantial. Yes. Now, is it? There's obviously something electrical. So, was there a battery or a plug? Or there's a battery. There's a battery in it, battery. but you can you can hook a battery up to the the um, so electrodes on the on the end here, yeah. and have it so that you know you have an external battery, okay. and then the the little switch there, which one of them is open on on the closest side. If you pull those off, it opens up the rotor right. area. Right. So it was electromechanical. Yes. And can you? Can yeah, it's you, mechanical in that every time you hit a key, it switches the the rightmost rotor goes one position, one click, and once yeah. it goes all the way around, the second rotor goes one oh, one click. Okay. So it, it propagates through. And later in the war, they added a fourth, a fourth. and even fifth rotor in the, the most recent ones. But the original original, which this one was made or delivered in 1936. And the actual delivery paper is over here. We have, we have a, a picture of it. Okay. But this has a sequence of maybe 50 machines that the German army purchased. Okay. And this is in the middle of that sequence. this is great. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I know this isn't quite the same as having the, the party, but we were wrestling with how in the world can we have, you know, 250 or 300 people show up, and it's like, we didn't want to wait a year. <laughs> it's bad enough to have to push it off until now. <laughs> and could, yeah. could, could you repeat kind of how you acquired this? A um, little, little brief thing, how you found out about it and acquired it? We... we now, we were the underbidder in an auction in Boston for a, a machine that was very similar. And the, the price of the machine set a record. Um, so we, we helped it get astronomical. So you helped bid it up. We helped bid it up. <laughs> it effectively cost the other guy a lot of money, and, you know, good or bad or otherwise. And after the auction was over, of course, we were very disappointed that we didn't get one. And the owner of the auction house um, calls me up and he says that the the collector uh, who is a very um, extensive collector of these um, was so happy with the results that he wanted to go ahead and offer up um, kind of the prize of his collection which is this machine um, to us so we were able to purchase it outside of the auction platform directly from the collector and we flew up to Boston and uh, picked it up, 
in New Hampshire and then uh, stayed the night in Boston and flew back and it was during one of their snowstorms where all the schools were closed so oh my it, was a, it was and of course you know, we had no way of knowing that you know getting a ticket a week ahead of time but um, it was a very interesting trip well that's great thank you